Okay, it's finally time to deal with this debacle right here. And I'm going to do that with all of this crap. Star of the show is right here. 12 volt solenoid valve. And I'm going to replace that goofy leaking manual valve with this. So it's going to fix two things at once. I'm going to fix this leak. And I'm going to fix shoddy design. So after this, instead of having to reach in here and move a valve manually, I can just hit a switch inside the cab to go from air conditioning to heat. Here's a better look at that leaky valve. I think it's leaking from the top and the bottom, but more from the top. So this thing, you just open it up to get heat, close it to get air conditioning. As hokey as she gets. Here's that valve out. This has cost me an alternator so far. And there's the valve installed. So I've got a, a barb fitting coming directly out of this thermostat housing or whatever it is. And uh, an elbow kind of just because. And it's just teed into this uh, factory hose. It's uh, a little hokey, but I'll figure something better out later. For now, I just need to get this thing going again. This tractor doesn't sit around all that much. It yeah, that's not unhokey either, but you know what? It works, and my alternator can finally breathe a sigh of relief. So I can't find my uh, box of relays and switches, but I was able to scrounge this little guy up. It'll do the job. I'm thinking right there. Just to make my life easy, it'll give me a nice straight shot through that hole right down there. So I ended up having to basically take everything apart in order to get at this. Got the pedal and the throttle handle there, and I could pull it out further. I only needed to get it out this far, but see, I already got the switch and kind of installed where I want it. But uh, in this, I want to get at the switched power, so I need to get at that harness. By the time you get to that point, there's not much left holding any of this together. By the way, if you're ever curious where the uh, computer is in one of these, it's right there. Okay, more of uh, for those who are curious. I sussed out the harness for the key switch. This white wire here is your power coming in. This top red wire here is for the start. This red wire right here, off to the right, it's uh, sitting there all on its own and it's doing nothing. I've got continuity as well when you turn the key to the start to uh, the starter but it, it doesn't plug into anything. There's no wire to receive it on this harness. And I don't know what's up with that but those two get power. These two get power when you turn the key all the way over and this one here so that would be this uh, black wire I guess it is. That's accessory wire or for the accessories. So that's when you got the key turned one click and then this red wire with a black stripe here that finally is your uh, switched power. So when it's in the start position that one has power. And those wires actually both have power. You should mention that the accessory still has power when the key is in this in the run position uh, it's just that this red one doesn't have power until it's in the run position well here's the finished ish product starting from the front I've got 14 gauge on a ring connector and a sheath over here the solenoid it's all wired in I have shrink tubing and uh, this wire loom they both roll up through here, through this grommet right there. 
and up to this relay this is actually part of a kit that came with that light bar that I put on the Ford so I just hacked it up and repurposed it that goes through to this switch and the shameful part I hate using those things but sometimes it's just too tempting and this was one of those times so this goes right over to my switch power now if I turn the key to the run position and hit that switch we should hear the solenoid click over switch and there we go perfect on a side note it's uh, I'm kind of glad I got in here there's uh, for the very least you can see the weirdness going on like this plug that does nothing I guess this is all part of the weird stuff that goes on when they change these over from the engine that they're supposed to have to this uh, this uh, Japanese diesel it almost looks like they had the wiring harness for the original style of engine already in here and then they just cut her out but right here I wanted to mention this because I noticed while I was farting around in here that this grommet it was uh, you can see where the this crack this opening is this was over here and this wiring harness was actually inside of that rubbing on the metal and there isn't even wire loom on that part the wire loom stops right here this is for the headlights and this was just rubbing up against metal kind of stuff that you gotta watch out for with Chinese equipment well since the job's not done until you prove it's done Well, I think that wraps up the cooling system on this machine. Overflow bottle, leaky coolant valve eliminated. Plus I gained some luxury with this. Realistically, you're only hitting that a couple times a year, but it's nice to not have to go under the hood to do it, I guess. So, that's done.